Querido irmão, querida irmã, querido amigo, querida amiga. Dear brother, dear sister, dear friend, now we got to one more tutorial of the daily food. We are in the series Word, Life and Edification, Part 2, in the Gospel of John. Now we are completing Book 3. Book 3 is entitled the church, the, the church, the Place of Those Who Love Jesus. What a title, isn't it? Week 4, we are in it now, the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. The biblical portion of reference is the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 12 through 36. Here on Monday, the title of the day is The Messengers Chosen by God. Let me read a couple of portions for you. In each day of the week, because each day brings lots of rich points and we are limited to convey that many riches to you with uh, faithfulness. So here on Monday, Mother Peter Dong begins to say that it is important to remember how human beings often find difficulty in receiving the Word of God when this Word comes through His Messenger. This is one of the difficulties and that is why the Church had serious problems. In the last 19 to 20 centuries, the church was without a revelation of the word because of obstacles. Usually God uses men inspired by him as channels to bring the revelation of the word. The resistance in accepting these messengers is owed. Evidently, even in the lives of Moses, even Moses' brother, Miriam and Aaron, they questioned why God speaks only through you. In Numbers chapter 12 and verse 2, we see that. So as we can also see later on in Korah's rebellion in chapter 16 verse 3, the difficulty in accepting the messengers chosen by God, it is faced by all prophets, including the apostles Peter and Paul and the Apostle John who found opposition of people like Diotrephus. This is in the 3rd John verse 9. Well, and then going to the end of Monday, we see spiritual communication of God with the churches through revelation always happens through a channel. The book of Revelation reveals that God gave revelation to Jesus Christ, sending it through his angel to signify it to his servant John. This portion is extremely important because God uses a channel. He wants to speak with his servants in a general way, but he uses a channel for this word to be conveyed faithfully to his servants. This way of conveying the revelation is destined to a group of servants. God wants to reveal to his servants, but he always uses a channel. It's good to have this realization for Satan not to deceive us, to distract us, and we end up being lost without direction, coming to us through the revelation of the prophetic word. On Tuesday we see Bethany, a place, an environment of love, reproducing the church life. So, last week you saw with more details about this matter, but here also on Tuesday we see that the Lord Jesus, we see he faced strong persecution from the main priests, chief priests and Pharisees in Jerusalem. He took refuge in Bethany where he was welcomed 
an environment of love and in a healthy atmosphere. How good, right, that the Lord always he has a place, and this place is the church. At the supper in John 12, the beginning of verse 1, supper to Jesus, Lazarus was at the table uh, while Martha served him. Mary broke an alabaster flask and anointed the foot of Jesus and dried up with his her foot, uh, spreading the fragrance of the oil in John 12, verses 2 and 3. This scene shows the essence in the church life. Sinner men who were redeemed, blind men seen, lame men walking, and everyone together serving the Lord. There is function to everyone in the church. It is always good to remember that we were sinners, we were redeemed with the Lord's blood, we were blind, we began to see, paralytic, we began to walk, and even dead in the case of Lazarus who was risen. So this is the environment right in the church, and it must be an environment where the Lord has freedom to dispense himself to us. This environment in the sphere in Jerusalem was hostile with the leaders trying to arrest and kill Jesus at any cost. We saw that in John 11:57. That's why the Lord departed from them, but for the signs he accomplished, especially his resurrection, Lazarus' resurrection, many believed Jesus. A number, a great crowd spontaneously took uh, olive branches and claimed, Hosanna, blesses he who comes in the name of the Lord, who is the King of Israel. See, the whole situation was changed. Lazarus' resurrection reversed this whole situation, which was of a strong opposition to the Lord, of rejection to the Lord. Now people were more opened to him even receiving him with much joy and appreciation. We see that in John 12, verse 13. Then on Wednesday we see that God wants to use us. It's quite important, right, this portion here. Lord Jesus entered Jerusalem in a very unique way, riding a donkey. Uh, John 12, 14. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it as it is written, Fear not that our sign, behold your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. The Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 14 through 16. According to the narration in Matthew, we see a donkey and a donkey's coat. In Matthew also narrates that. And we also see a donkey and a donkey's coat, while John is limited to record only this donkey's coat. Why this difference? The explanation lies in the fact that this donkey's coat, no one ever sat on it or used it to bear any burden, any load. This donkey's coat was used to just go with the king, so it was essential not to bear any burden, indicating that the donkey's coat was exclusively to Jesus. Later on, in the Gospel of John, we see, Do not fear, son of Zion, your king is coming in the donkey's coat. Verse 15, pointing out the son of Zion among the people of Jerusalem, referring to those who care for the kingdom of David. This, this uh, daughter of Zion are all those who are longing for the Lord's return. The Lord has many children. Lots of people were converted, turned to the Lord, and became children of God. But few of those were longing for the Lord's coming and the, to establish 
his kingdom to be established. May the Lord produce in us this group of people with this desire, this yearning. Just as the donkey's gold is exclusively used for the Lord, those who are humble in Bethany are chosen by God to bring Christ's government. God wants to use each one as a little donkey, a donkey's goat, in order to crown Jesus as king. Let us bring our king back. So, we are a little flock as we see in Luke 12, verse 31 and 32. We are the church in Philadelphia with a little strength mentioned in Revelation 3.8. Well, the church in Philadelphia is of little strength, but they keep the word of the Lord. So this is a secret. The, the church is not mighty economically, financially, in terms of political power with a great influence. But the church has the name and the word of the Lord. It is a little flock blessed and chosen by the Lord. On Thursday, the title is to, be, to feed on the, the, the finest vine tree. We are the humble donkey's goal to establish his kingdom. What a privilege, isn't it? In Genesis, we see this prophecy on Judah. He will be praised by his brothers, will have dominion over his enemies, and will receive the royal scepter to the coming of Silo, and to him shall obey the people. See that in Genesis chapter 49, verses 8 and 10, we read that. Genesis uh, 49, 8. Judah, you are he whom your brother shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah's a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. As a lion who shall rise him. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Our Lord Jesus Christ, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah, but to be enthroned as king, he needs a donkey's coat, as we see, binding his donkey to the vine and his donkey's coat to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, his cloth in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine, and his teeth whiter than milk. This is the continuation in Genesis 49, verses 1, 11, and 12. How will God use us? He needs a donkey's coat, obedient, tied to the choicest vine. How? Can we be tied to the choicest vine through the immersion of the word, transcribing the word, hearing the word attentively, feeding on the prophetic word, even by having war Christ. This is a way for us to be bound to the choicest vine and to go out and to bring life to others. Life comes to us and we need to bring it to others by preaching the gospel in practice. This is a precious way of, may I pray for you, may I pray for you. This is wonderful, isn't it? While the donkey loose and eats anything, the ones who is bound, to the choice is fine, enjoys in his daily living of a rich diet of grapes representing life, life, and more life, because it is an exclusive diet of the Word of God. This is our need. We have to immerse ourselves in the Word, to enter in the Word, to receive the Lord's direction, the Lord's supply, to enjoy this wonderful diet, and to share with others. This is what the Lord is expecting from the Church in a normal situation. Now let us turn to uh, John chapter 12, verse 17. Therefore the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb, raised him from the dead, bore witness for this reason. The people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you're accomplishing nothing. 1221. 
Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, uh, Philip, chapter 20, verse 22. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. In verse 23, we see Jesus answered them. It was meaningful. He said, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And then he says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. This moment the Lord was delighting popular support, contrasting with the persecution of the Jewish leaders. That moment he speaks about his death and his resurrection. Of course, this comes after much suffering that he's been through. On Friday, we see the title, Jesus died and bore much fruit. The Lord did not come to reach popularity among men. If he were to come for that, that would be uh, very would be a moment for that, but well, he came in to die as a grain of wheat. Jesus understood that not to be alone, he should have died. As a grain of wheat, he must fall to the ground and to die to bear fruit. When choosing death, Jesus knew that he would produce fruits in abundance. In other words, case he would give in to the temptation of seeking glory and fame for man, he would be alone. Lord Jesus, his decision was very clear. Then the time to be glorified has come, the Son of Man. He did not come to gain fame or popularity, but to die and to produce much grain. We see that in John 12, 24. God's life was within the man Jesus. In the same manner, the, the wheat's life is inside the grain of wheat. If the shell doesn't die, or doesn't break up, the life of God could not be immersed, emerged. With resurrection, God's life came out from within Jesus and bore fruit, producing much grain, which resulted in his glorification. If at that moment Jesus was seeking for fame and reputation for himself, we wouldn't be here today and join him in the church in this pleasant life, church life, saved by him and reconciled with God. The Gospel of Luke, see in chapter 24, verse 26, Luke uh, 24:26. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into glory? In resurrection, he was the first Son of God. For the first time, he opened the door for other children of God to enter in glory. And there's a number of verses that you must read them. So the Lord's death in the end of that day tells us that Christ died with this purpose. What purpose? To produce much grain to compose a dwelling place for God in spirit. And then we get to Saturday, then we'll be better understand the reason for the sufferings that Jesus went through, the sufferings we go through today to remo remove impurities in the soul life. To experience the church life today, Jesus had to go through death. In the resurrection, life was produced. As members of the body of Christ, we cannot remain in the natural sphere of our natural mind. We must live in the sphere of resurrection. Apostle Paul makes it clear that I've been crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And he, he says that but Christ lives in me, and the flesh which I now live, and the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2, 19 and 20. How can we continue to live on the faith in the Son of God? Through his word. The Lord's presence today is manifested through his word. 
But living living through faith in the Son of God is the same as living through His Word. Immersion in the Word enables us not to live by the self. We have to understand the importance of the immersion in the Word, of inculcating the Word in us, which will break us, make us free from living in the old man. The more we immerse ourselves in the Word by inculcating it in our hearts, the more the reality that we've been crucified with Christ will be manifested. This is the way in the church life. Amen. Apostle Peter also makes it clear for us the, the salvation process of our soul. First Peter chapter 1 verses 5 through 7. There, we read, we are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this great little joy, though now for a little while, you need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Peter receive this burden, this perception of the importance of sufferings to, for our spiritual development, for our growth, for the salvation of our soul. The only way to separate the pure gold from impurities is it is with high temperature. In our lives, high temperatures represent tribulations and sufferings that we go through. Sometimes we do not understand what we're going through why we're going through some situations and we question why the Lord allows so many sufferings. Dear brothers and sisters, God always has a purpose in all things. He desires to purify us from our impurities. In high temperatures, temp the, the impurities go up to the surface and they can be removed. All of that happens with us so that the value of our faith may be increased more and more. So we enter in the Word, we also understand the, the pressure situations, the sufferings, tribulations, as part of this growth process for our faith to increase more and more. For us to live by faith, always trusting the Lord, not by what we see. And completing this week, we have on Sunday, Jesus' mission to glorify the Father. After Lazarus' resurrection, Jesus was at the peak of his fame and popularity among the people, but he did not seek spotlights or applauses from man. His focus was on doing the will of the Father who sent him. The Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John, Jesus expresses his mission. Father, glorify your Son, John 12, 28. This mission is restated in other portions of this Gospel, emphasizing that he did not seek his own glory, but the glory of the Father. John 5, verse 19, John chapter 6, verse 38, John chapter 7, verse 18. Jesus chose to follow in direction to the cross. And as a man, the soul was in anguish before his imminent death. He had full awareness that he came to this earth exactly for this crucial moment, and he did not turn back. Let us continue here. The way to glorify God, it is this, to finish the work that He entrusted us. It is worth nothing to proclaim glory to God if our actions do not glorify Him. To glorify God on earth, it is to do the work that He entrusted us to do. This work is of a twofold mission for the church to produce, to build up the body of Christ and to bring the kingdom of God back by preaching the gospel of the kingdom all over the inhabited earth. Hallelujah for the twofold mission to build up the body of Christ and to bring back God's kingdom through the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom in all inhabited earth. In John 12, the Lord, in verse 28, the Lord said, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again.
The multitude, when they heard it, the people when they stood by heard, it said that they, they thought it was a thunder or an angel, but Jesus explained that it was not because of him, but for the sake of them, for their sake. In the verse 31, now is the judgment of this world, now the ruler of this world will be cast out, and if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself, this said, signifying by what death he would die. Verses 31 to 33. Jesus, when he mentioned the brown serpent lifted up by Moses in the wilderness, wanted to make them understand that he would be raised up on the cross in a similar way, but without the poison of sin. And we saw that in the Gospel of John in chapter 1, verse 51. Remember that? He would carry, who would, he bore upon himself our sins on the cross uh, as a sinner, even though he had no sin. Romans 8, 3, Jesus, a brown serpent, the likeness of the brown serpent, he only had the likeness of sinful flesh because he, he took part in flesh and blood coming from the Mary's gestation, Hebrews 2.14, when being raised up on the cross as a bronze serpent, Jesus destroyed sin, condemned, condemned and destroyed the one who had the power of death, the devil. Revelation reports that the great dragon, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan, was thrown to earth together with his angels. Chapter 12, verse 9 in Revelation. In his Gospel, the Apostle John reveals that the ruler of this world is already judged. John 16:11. Hallelujah. On the cross, the judgment was finished. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Wonderful, isn't it? May the Lord bless you. May this week, in your reading, in your enjoyment of it, together with the saints, and in practicing and thinking the word, practice the word to be real in your life. God bless you all.